Hey guys, welcome back to another video and another series. In this series, I'm going to cover the topic um, gravitational fields. And in this video, I'm going to talk about law of gravitation. So, in general, we know that every object, be it you, be it a pen, has a weight. And it has that weight due to gravity acting on it. So, let's say you and me on this planet Earth, we have a gravitational field acting on us, which is why we're being able to walk around, right? So that gravity, that amount of gravity turns out to be 9.81 in our case. That is 9.81 newtons of force per unit mass. So if you're 1 kg, the amount of force being exerted on you is 9.81 newtons. Now, why do we have this gravity and how do we understand what amount of force is being exerted on us? Now, it is a given that gravity in case of Earth is 9.81, but how did we find this out, right? So, to understand that, how this specific amount of force is being exerted on us, we, we're going to understand the law of gravitation. And we're going to see that for different objects with different mass, they're going to have different amounts of gravitational field, exerting different amounts of gravity on, let's say, let's say Mars is going to have a different gravity, and let's say Moore is going to have a different gra amount of gravity, because their field strength, that gra gravitational field strength is going to vary. So to understand that, we're going to first understand what gravitational field is. So, it is a region of space where a mass experiences a force due to the gravitational attraction of a other mass. So, let's say in our case, it's Earth, right? It is going to have its own gravitational field that is attracted towards itself. Now, let's say there is another mass which has its own gravitational field. Let's say this pen. Now, due to its small mass, it's going to have very small strength of gravitational field, which is why it won't be a bit, uh, able to attract Earth towards itself. However, there is a force between both. That is, this pen is going to exert a force on Earth, and the same amount of force will be exerted on Earth I mean, the same amount of force will be exerted on the object by Earth. It is the same force, but that force is not enough to move Earth towards the pen, which is why the pen compensates and moves towards Earth itself. Which is why if you throw this pen, you're going to see it's going to fall towards the center of the Earth. That means there is gravitational field. And this region of space where you see the arrows the attractive force, these um, denote the gravitational field lines of an object, in our case, Earth. So this region of space, if I highlight it, is the space of gravitational field. Every object is going to have its own gravitational field. The only difference is going to be its strength. How strong is the gravitational field going to be? In case of Earth, it's massive, which is why it gets to attract every object towards itself. Right? So now, if I um, go ahead and take a few examples of fields, gravitational field is not the only example. We also have electric fields. So if you study that topic, which you have to if you're studying A2 physics, you're going to see that there are electric field lines, that is, force applied due to one's charge. So, in case of positive charges, what you'll see is the field lines are outwards. Why it is, you'll see in that topic. And in case of negative charges, the fields are inwards, that is attractive. So, these lines denote the field line direction. However, what I mentioned in, uh, in case of gravitational field, is the field lines are always attractive. That is, it's always going to be towards the center of the object. Always attractive. Right? 
So if I leave an object over here, where is it going to go? Depending on the field line, it's going to move towards the surface of the Earth, right? Attracted. Now, in case of um, gravitational field notice, this is the surface of the Earth. We do know that Earth is a big sphere, but uh, let's say when you're walking around a road, what you see is the road is straight, it's not curved. Now, that is due to the fact that Earth is so massive that you cannot notice the curvature with your bare eye. So, that is also why this this amount of length of Earth is going to seem like a straight line. Which is why it's going to have a uniform field line. It's going to have uniform field lines because the mass is evenly distributed along the surface. We're considering it to be at least that the uh, mass is evenly distributed. So the field lines are evenly distributed. The force per uh, the force at every point in this region on an object is going to be the same. So considering the mass distribution is uniform, we can say there is uniform field lines above the surface. So let's say you release a box, any object, what it's going to do is due to that gravitational field, it's going to fall towards the surface of the earth. So that is due to the feature of gravitational field. Now in case of the earth itself, it is massive and you're going to see it is a sphere, not a perfect sphere, but in our case, we're going to consider it to be one. And in that case, you're going to see the field lines are radial. I'm going to talk about it again, but the field lines are radial. When you consider the entire earth, so let's say you go to outer space and start looking at earth, it's going to seem like a perfect sphere, which is why the field lines from here to let's say to the surface of the earth it's going to make a 90 degrees. Even this one is going to make a 90 degrees. All the field lines are normal the surface of the Earth. That means they meet at the center of the object. That is, in our case, Earth. Right? Now again, gravitational force can only attract, not repel. Now, we understood what gravitational fields are in theory. Now, to understand what uh, what amount of force is going to be exerted on any mass, we have to understand Newton's law of gravitation. What does it say? The gravitational force between two point masses, the gravitational force between two point masses is proportional, is proportional to the product of the mass and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. What does this mean? So, one by one, the gravitational force F, or call it FG, force due to gravity, is proportional to the product, product of two masses. So let's say you have mass 1, this, and you have mass 2. So if you want to find out the force between both the masses, which is going to be equal to abide by Newton's third law, equal and opposite force. So therefore, this force Fg is going to be equal to this force Fg. So mass 2 exerts a force Fg on M1. And M1 is going to exert the same force on M2. So what did we understand from the first line? The force exerted is going to be proportional to the product of both the mass. That is M1 times M2 proportional to the product. Now the second part is it is inversely proportional to the square of their separation. So, what is this separation? Remember, you're going to consider from the center of the mass. From the center of the mass. Because uh, when I was explaining the radial field lines, what I had mentioned is all of these lines seem to meet towards the center of the Earth. Which is why we can consider the gravitational field is due to the mass at the center of the Earth 
or the field lines are going to meet at the center of the earth which is why we can consider all of that gravitational field strength to be due to that point at the center. Now since it is a perfect sphere that is we are considering it to be a perfect uh, sphere we can make this point mass approximation since in case of a perfect sphere all the gravitational field lines seem to meet at one point and that point we consider to be the center of mass and that point we consider to be the point mass from which we are going to uh, calculate the separation. Now, In case of a mass that is let's say not uniform if the field line over here is going to be here the field line over here is going to be here field line let's say is somewhere here so notice these are not going to meet at the same place all of those are meeting at different places which is why you cannot make that same point mass approximation anyways coming back to our newton's law of gravitation so what we had figured is uh, the force is proportional to the product of the two mass and inversely proportional to the sep uh, square of the separation that is the distance between the two masses so from the center of M1, that is over here, and to the center of M2, that is over here. Now consider this to be the separation between both the masses. And it is going to be proportional to the square of the separation. Right? So this is your Newton's law of gravitation. This is how you're going to find out what amount of force is exerted on any object, on any object point mass so let's say this pen or any other object what is the force going to be it's going to be m1 times m2 that is mass of earth mass of the object divided by the separation between the center of mass of the object and center of mass of the earth so that is how you can find what amount of force is exerted on every object okay so notice one thing both forces are Newton's action-reaction pair. That is, the force exerted is the same but in opposite direction. Right? And the other thing is, again, no repulsion, only attraction since field lines are always in one direction that is towards it, its center. Right. Um, now, this, is, this describes the proportionality, right? However, the moment you remove that sign, you have to introduce a constant, right? Now, what is this constant going to be? So, experimentally, it has been figured out that it is going to be in G, which is the gravitational constant, and the value of that is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 Newton meter square kg to the power minus 2, right? This is going to be your um, gravitational constant. So every time you want to calculate the force on any mass, you have to use this constant. So your formula at the end of the day is going to be force is equals to gravitational co uh, force times product of mass divided by their uh, uh, square of separation. Okay, so I uh, forgot to mention one specific thing about the point mass approximation. That is, I mentioned that we are considering a perfect sphere that is the mass is evenly distributed throughout the sphere and in those cases we can make the point mass um, approximation regardless of what distance the planet or sphere covers that is uh, at what separation you are co in comparison to the sphere or planet in case of spheres that are not um, uniform uh, in in terms of mass in those cases, we can also make the same point mass approximation. That is, let's say it has the perfect shape. However, the mass is not evenly distributed through the sphere. Now, in those cases, what happens is at large distances, what I've written in green over here, at large distances, you can make the approximation since until and unless you get really close to the surface you're not going to um, feel the difference in mass distribution within the sphere or planet so at large distances even with non-uniform mass 
spheres or planets, you can still do the point mass approximation since at large distance the influence of um, ununiform mass distribution is not going to affect the calculation. However, the moment you are close to the planet or close to the ununiform mass sphere, it is going to hinder your calculation. Which is why um, at la in a lot of Mars schemes, you will see it mentioned that this, this point mass approximation is viable for um, cases where there is a large distance or large separation between two planets, right? Uh, and in case of um, perfect spheres with uniform mass distribution, the point mass approximation seemed to always work. So yeah, that's it actually for, for this video. And uh, see you in the next one.